If she bails on you, it's for good. Welcome to IP Super. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's Solid. actually really good. <laughs> episode 305 of Ivy Suffer. I am obviously Gonzo Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm biodegradable wooden box. I... <laughs> I am two pink fedoras. <laughs> I... I'm the chloroform in the medical emergency yeah. kit. <laughs> we, we're, we're joined by our special guest chloroform that is in every chloroform. everybody's first aid kit yeah um, standard <laughs> we are talking about 2020's deadly mile high club perfect <laughs> lifetime original with a special Man, guest I... Lindsay turnbull <laughs> Hello, thanks for, uh, I mean, I don't know why I'm thanking you, I'm not thanking you Oh, no, just, I mean, like This movie slapped, Lindsay Like <laughs> You've gotten a way better deal than Shane has for the numerous <laughs> oh my God. shitty Christian horror movies we've made him watch. So <laughs> this was like in, in the annals of this podcast. This is this is this is all basically a five star movie. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, fair. Easily, fair. easily, like top ten percent. <laughs> I think I think at one point we tried to like figure out a percentage of what movies we thought were good and which weren't out of the like four hundred and fifty something covered and I was like I'm gonna say roughly ten percent were maybe good. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah. So we watched Deadly Mile High Club, which I will say real stupid, but better than Deadly Dilf by a mile. Uh, I think they'd make a beautiful doubleheader. <laughs> so, oh yeah, because Kit wasn't on last week's episode. So after watching Deadly Dilf, I watched a movie called Twisted Marriage Therapist on Tubi. <laughs> that I'm not joking is one of the most unhinged movies I've ever watched, and it made me like Deadly Dilf even less because it was like this movie had an insane like M Night Shyamalan twist every 15 minutes, where I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" <laughs> I'm like, I'm not sure it was place. like this woman in the beginning is cheating on some cheating on her husband with this dude who you find out is the husband of the marriage therapist. The woman that was cheating goes to see the marriage therapist and wins like free couples therapy. The marriage therapist falls in love with this woman that cheated on her husband, decides to start stalking her is drugging the woman she's in love with husband so he looks crazy <laughs> like she this therapist also has a i guess live-in girlfriend slave that she signed <laughs> out of like a like a institution and is like keeping drug it's fucking wild and i was like this is everything deadly dilf should have been <laughs> instead of like boring as fuck except for the yeah. last deadly dilf was like barely scandalous at all at least deadly mile high club had a sex scene in it <laughs> fair uh, on top Actually, of a wooden multiple. crate containing an unconscious woman <laughs> Incredible. pretty good choice uh yeah shadow lifetime <laughs> Oh yeah, Lifetime doing it better than fucking Tubi apparently. Was uh, it really Lifetime? Yeah, this is a Lifetime movie. I mean, I don't know, like it's at least was made by Lifetime. Whether it like is a straight to Tubi, if it if it actually came out or was <laughs> aired on Lifetime, who knows? Yeah, I just know like as it was like you know Lifetime's production company. Why? Why did we all get obsessed with Tiger King? At the start of the pandem pandemic, when we could have had Deadly Mile High Club. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? I will say, as the probably one of maybe ten people that never watched Tiger King, no idea. I also <laughs> didn't watch Tiger King. <laughs> Perfect. Not like 
for any reason. I was. It just made me sad that the entire basis of the show is like predicated on animal cruelty, and I just like couldn't, couldn't. I did watch Tiger King, but it wasn't until like last year. So I was. <laughs> I feel like that doesn't count. <laughs> literally in like the middle of packing to move. Like, as that show was, like, blowing up everywhere. And Caitlin had already watched it by the time I got here. And I was like, this looks real dumb. I'm not interested. <laughs> I have seen yeah. the Ghost Adventures episode, though, where they yeah. go to Tiger King, Perfect. Tiger King's uh, compound Joe's and zoo. find a penis pump. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's he's in the prison, like, ten minutes away. From, oh. Fun fact. From you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just go, go hang out with him. See if he needs a... Yeah. A guest. He seems normal and fun. I wonder. I wonder if I can bring all my stuff in there. We can have him on an episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how the prisons love to let prisoners They're, on podcasts. Prisons, prisons are pro podcast. I reckon. <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> um. All right. So, Kit and I obviously think this is a perfect movie. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Lindsay the entire time was texting me and was like, what the fuck are you making me watch? <laughs> well, you know, I also watched approximately, like, probably four or less new <laughs> movies a year. And that's kind of changed a little bit because sometimes I'll just, like, put on the Hallmark channel in the background. But, like, you watch one and you've watched them all, so they don't really count. Yeah, I was... <laughs> Like, uh, Caitlin was watching it with me, and we were talking about it. I was like, and we were just like, this movie's insane. And I was like, yeah, Lindsay hated it. But I was like, I think Lindsay maybe watches five movies a year. And I was like, most of those are probably Hallmark movies. So, I don't Hallmark know. <laughs> I have also, I'm having a friend over this week to watch um, the Bring It On sequels. Because they get progressively more racist and bad. <laughs> Great. <laughs> And so, even though we're only, like, four or five years apart in age, but for some reason, our cultural references are so different. Like, he's never seen any of these movies. So, I've just been, like, torturing him with bad teen, like, comedies from the 2000s. I mean, sounds like hell on earth to me. <laughs> <laughs> Katie made me watch Little Nicky for, like, the first time since it came out. I don't know, a couple months ago, and I was like, I hate I all of this. I didn't make you. The Patreon people ah. made you. <laughs> Whatever. Slaps. Oh, God. I cool. hated that movie for what it's worth. <laughs> I didn't like it then, and I was like, well, maybe, like, you know, it's been 20-something years. Maybe, maybe it'll work better on me now. It did not. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing Tarantino's ever done. Oh, man. I don't know. <laughs> Have you seen the video on, uh... Instagram, or I guess probably started on TikTok, of the people harassing him at a restaurant where a black woman is just filming herself trying to get him to say the N-word on camera. Jesus Christ, no. <laughs> and they just are like a bunch of gr a group of people chanting toes at him. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. He looks so upset because there's like yelled at him for being a Zionist. It's pretty good. Uh, Alright, so Katie, what, your, what was your take? You could go either way on this. Um, this was okay. I definitely... So, this is way more the Lifetime movie, original kind of movie that I'm used to. Like, obviously, it's different because it was, like, from 2020 and not back in the day. Uh, I It was definitely better than Deadly Dill, for sure. Um, so, it was fine. Like, I will say... Like, I love a gimmick, and the gimmick in this movie being that this man randomly decides that he wants to be a pilot is, like, goofy. Everything that happens in it Amazing. is, like, really crazy. So, like, it wasn't obviously, like, it was it was fine. I think, I thought it was a little long for what happens in it. <laughs> it's like 88 minutes. <laughs> I think what? something <laughs> I think something is happening with Katie's Tubi where Tubi is putting like forty five <laughs> minutes of commercials in like all of her breaks because like every episode now Katie's like this movie is was like four hours, hours and I'm long. like this movie is seventy minutes. <laughs> Katie is getting less and less patient as we get further into the podcast. I think so. 
I think I really, yeah. We're going to watch um, like a 45 minute movie and she's like, ah, I could have lost like 30 minutes. I think, yeah. Uh, it was it was totally fine. It was. Um, this is what happens when all you do the rest of your time is binge like The Office and The X Files. Is now you just everything should be like forty five minutes. I think I think so. Yeah, honestly, I've been watching Golden Girls and Whose Line because HBO has every season of Whose Line Is It Anyway now. How does I mean, that hold up? <laughs> uh, actually, pretty good. I gotta say. That's one of those shows that I feel like I'm like, I don't like, because I've hovered over it before. But like, maybe I wonder if this is like still good. And I'm like, I don't know. This feels like a thing where it would probably be like real dated comedy. It Well, the one thing that I keep rolling my eyes at is they make, so the early episodes are like the 90s. And yeah. there's a lot of like Monica Lewinsky, Bill Clinton mm-hmm. jokes. Oh, yeah. But... Honestly, like, overall, I would say that it holds up uh, pretty well. I remember watching it on, like, Comedy Central when they would just yeah. play that shit, like, ad nauseum. And uh, I remember liking it, but, like, I just, I could not, at this point, tell you fucking a single joke from <laughs> that show, except for, I feel like, in my memory, there was, like, a lot of more, not, like, jokes about gay people but a lot of like jokes surrounding gay people if that makes sense i don't know Who? There's some, i i was just thinking like one of the funniest skits i watched the other day like had me in tears it's they picked this like older lady and she has to be like completely limp like she's dead and they act <laughs> So everyone has to be completely limp like they're dead. And Colin is running around, like, acting out this scene and moving everyone's mouths. And it's like a Mrs. Robinson situation. (laughs) (laughs) And I, I'll have to say, like, I cannot describe it, but I was, like, in tears laughing. Because the old woman just, like, totally plays it straight. Like, she doesn't even crack a smile the whole time. It makes it, like... Ten times funnier. I just think it's so funny that that show was a basically just like, hey, who are all of the funny people from the Drew Carey show that aren't Drew Carey? And yeah. Had them like, <laughs> be the panel or whatever. <laughs> um, all right. So, sounds like everybody thought this was a perfect movie. <laughs> uh, Katie, if you would uh, want to get into the plot. Yeah. We can... I got I got a lot of questions about this lady's teaching methods. <laughs> they seem pretty sound. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's fine. I was she's, you know. Texted Lindsay and I was like, you know, I gotta say, it seems like first day you get shown a picture of a cockpit. Second day you go up in the airplane, and third day they show you the first aid kit. Seems like a good class. Yeah. I think Fourth day you're it's... you're flying the plane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. Um you get to bang the teacher before you even fly the plane, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean... She, and I, she's she's not even flying the plane either, so... <laughs> uh, um, yeah, well, let's fucking... I, yeah, okay. I got a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, I do too, I got zero actually. questions. Okay, it all good. made sense. It's perfect. Um, oh my goodness. Kit is Uh-oh. going to become a pilot now. Mm-hmm. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. My computer screen just is like turning off. Okay, we're okay. That's that probably wasn't... fine. Why? What are you doing, girl? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I, I hit the screen. The, I hit the off button. <laughs> no, it was just like some weird drivers thing popped up. Even though we've been talking for twenty minutes and I haven't clicked on anything, so Can't all right, I think drop. we're good. All right. No, I I wish honestly. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so this movie starts with. A couple in a plane, and they are flying through a storm. Uh, I already got to say, pretty bad situation. I don't really like, like, I'm okay. I've flown enough now that I'm like, okay, in a regular plane, I'm okay on my best day, right? If there's any turbulence, sayonara. Uh, Being in like a tiny, like, passenger plane like that, I have absolutely no desire ever. And um, they're flying through like thunderstorms. If there's no turbulence, like what? What's the point of flying? You know, <laughs> I need to be 
not near a window, and knock the fuck out. If you want me to be on a plane, it's going anywhere near I, water. I, I can, yeah. I've been flying on planes. My mom was a travel agent, so I've been play, flying on planes since, like, before I could walk. But every couple of years, I develop, like, a very intense, like, fear of flying. And the last time I was flying home from I don't even know where, probably 70K, probably the boat, like, I dozed off and the plane, like, dropped. And I woke up and I, like, was convinced I was going to die. Oof. And ever since then, I've been like, I hate this. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I kind of had the same, where, like, my grandma was, like, a travel agent. And so, and, like, you know we lived in California and like part of our family was still in Ohio. And like, so we would like fly around a lot when I was a kid. And then it was like, as I became an adult, I was like, this is insane. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> and I also like this, like I, it sucks because like, I desperately want to go to like Italy and like Iceland and like all these countries, but I'm like terrified of flying over water. Because in my mind, that's, that's it, the best place to fly in my mind. If we crash on land, I could probably live. If I crash in the ocean, I'm just going to fucking die and sink like a rock. So, like... I totally feel the opposite. Like, I do, in the too. water, yeah. like, I'm a pretty good swimmer. I feel like I have a chance. But, so my phone, since I booked all these trips for this year, and I am doing a lot of traveling in general, my phone it keeps giving me alerts. It's like, do you want to hear about the latest airplane emergency? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a flight. No, thank you. <laughs> It's a flight that I'm taking. One was, like, to Hawaii, and I'm going to Hawaii in October. And it's, like, flight to Hawaii almost crash lands in the fucking Pacific Ocean. I'm, like, Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> we see you're <laughs> flying Boeing. Here's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, is this how you would like to die? Like, no, thank you. Please, I would rather be in the prop plane with this fucking insane woman. For me, for me it's, like... I think less the flying aspect and more that like fuck the ocean and ever me being anywhere near that nightmare. So in my head, like if I crash in the ocean, I'm just like, well, here comes 35 jaws is to come eat me. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't, can't even fathom why I think that maybe I would have a chance in the ocean, but if you crash into like the grand Canyon, uh, I think there's no way. I literally, I, I won't go on a boat if I can't see land because I have to rationalize in my head that I could swim back to shore possibly. Sure. <laughs> Even though like I would probably take like, I don't know, get like 10 yards and be like, fuck it. I just swallow a bunch of water to sink. I could have too, too out of shape for this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Flying. Well, not great. well no, not great at all. Uh, I think I might, I, and I actually might end up flying twice next month, so I'm not looking forward to it. Um, Where are you going? None of your business. You got a job. <laughs> 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 um, Katie's going to fly back, and her weird stalkers are going to have moved in. Yeah, yeah <laughs> probably. Joker car is going to be in your living room. They're, <laughs> they're coming in from both sides of me, okay? I'm <laughs> um, Okay. <laughs> there's a plane flying in a storm and uh it's this couple and they're having uh f problems because not only is the engine stalling uh the radio doesn't work and they're like mayday mayday oh no and then there's a crash sound and we get the title already which is deadly mile high club which <laughs> given the circumstances I, seems <laughs> I, I gotta say much better title than the alternate of just deadly flight i would have not watched deadly flight no, absolutely no, not. no, no. Also, um, insane juxtaposition. Yes. Like, here's a plane crash, deadly mile high club. Here's a dude skipping down the street. Oh, <laughs> like the upbeat music. The music in this is just wild. baffling. When you get to like the the final shot of this, and it goes into the song, whatever the song <laughs> was at the credits, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I will say like off the top. Uh, I think unlike the first movie where they were trying to, whoever was trying to make us feel bad for this fucking guy because his wife was quote unquote treating him like a baby, even though we all established it was not true and she was a goddess. Um, in this one, 
they are all actually being pretty mean to him because he seems just like a paper plate person. Like he's not like mistreating anybody. <laughs> he, he's just kind yeah. of like a, it's a he, harmless, a harmless yeah. goofball. Right. I, so there's a lot of times where people are berating him for being an idiot, <laughs> like over and over again, people call him a bed stain, an idiot. I, t- I try not to be that way, but he is kind of dumb. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, the mother he's completely walls, right. oblivious to anything that's happening in this movie. But, but like, you before... don't know that in the first fifteen minutes when they're calling him an idiot every twenty seconds. Right. It's like, damn, calm down. It's, and by the end, it's like, oh yeah, it's he's really, pretty dumb. He is. Does he cannot pick up a signal to save his life? Ob- well, obviously, right. And so by the end of the movie, I was like, okay, I can like kind of see where they're coming from. But in the beginning, it's it's kind of intense. He- the best he learned to fly, the, God damn it! But the the <laughs> yeah. best thing is like all of it starts specifically because he barely looks like somebody, remotely yeah. looks like this person that died in the the fucking <laughs> no, crash. The no, no, like, fucking. I know, not. like, he like doesn't. it's he like really he's like wearing he's, a jacket. He's They're a, both wearing jackets. He's a white it. dude with like brown hair. <laughs> yeah, it it's insane. I was, so I was okay, like, I actually I think that the the Jake. Right. Like the Jake that the movie is about is actually like he's cute. He's kind of way better looking than the other Jake. (laughs) But he is dumb. But like they don't I I was watching the like scene where they're cutting back and forth. And I'm like, these people look nothing like what? I felt like I had facial blindness. I was like, what am I missing? (laughs) You're missing that this woman is unhinged because of trauma. I was going to say she. I wrote in my, like, I wrote a note that said, Jesus Christ, this woman has PTSD. <laughs> yeah, it's, she's, yeah. It's wild. Like, um, looking okay. at their, like, headshots next to each other, they are, like, <laughs> the least lookalike people I've maybe ever seen. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't. They don't at all. How, uh, I just like dudes like, wearing jackets who want to fly. I, I have a lot of questions of how this lady gets through her life if every white dude with brown hair she sees is, like... <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. It, it it's weird that they ended up having the same name, but like, I don't I don't know. So yeah. How so do you go they crash. Life right? If you hear the name Jake, and just like spiral out of control. I don't know because literally, and I can't, can't be the State only Farm. person. Can't listen. Exactly. To... Every time somebody says Jake, I'm like from State Farm, State and Farm? it's not even a funny joke at this point. But like, how do you not think those words together? Meanwhile, anyway, so it's the title, Deadly Mile High Club. Deadly um, Jake. A woman wakes up. Jake's on who... a plane. Yeah, they <laughs> fucked there up go. so bad. We got Fuck. There. We got there. Um, she wakes up. She's extremely fucked up. She's in the hospital, and um, she finds out that the man who was in the in the plane with her did not make it. Uh, this interaction between her and the hospital like nurse is also very weird. Um, okay, so now it's six months later, and we see that we're in Hollywood, and there's well, a roundabouts Hollywood, and there's like upbeat music playing, and we see her name is Tanya, and uh, she is completely healed, and she seems fine, but she's teaching flight school, okay? And this student comes in who is named Jake, as we just were talking about. And she sees him immediately upon walking in and has flashbacks of this man named Jacob, who goes by Jake. Um, and I don't know how she wasn't having flashbacks from Twilight instead, but yeah, that's for real. maybe for another for another time. And um, Jacob is the man who died. Going for this now. There you go. Twilight Mile High Club. That's exactly right. <laughs> um. The man who died in the plane crash was Jacob. And um, she's, like, stunned by this new student named Jake. At home... Okay, so this is, like, literally what we were just talking about. At home, she is looking at pictures of Jacob, who died in the beginning. And she's, like, crying. Uh, For some reason, she has a picture of this new guy Jake's ID on her personal computer. And uh, I found that strange. She's looking at it. And then this is when she's like clicking back and forth between the two pictures. And I said, LOL, she seems to think they look alike, question mark. (laughs) And then she says, Jake, you came back. And I said, oh, no. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, doesn't again, doesn't seem like do, that's going to lead to good things. <laughs> so here's the thing that's confusing to me. Um, it's been six months, and so I'm really confused because she is seeming to try to convince us that these two men look exactly the same. They have the same name, okay, which granted is weird. They do not look alike at all. Except, as we said, they're just, like, two white guys. Like, they don't even... Like, the new Jake doesn't even have, like, long hair. Like, they don't... They should have just had... I don't know. Whatever. Who cares? They do not look alike at all. They but should have the, the me, actress that played the guy that died just grow a mustache and have him play this guy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Or, like, have him had cut his hair or something. Right? These guys do not look the same at all. And also, she's, like... She is conveying to me in some way that she thinks he's returned to her in like a reincarnation kind of way but like it was six months ago and this is a full-grown man do you know what i'm saying like it's very strange she's just obviously unwell uh, right she's immediately works. uh i'm pretty sure that it's not how it works though like uh... you're just walking around for like 30 years and then all of a sudden a soul enters your body yeah kit could be <laughs> kit science quarter okay. for next week i'll say what yeah, that was, what movie was that? We watched that movie where that happened. Did we? What? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't know. like a reincarnation thing, but like someone entered another human being's body, like as a spirit. What the fuck was that? Uh, Check back with me in an hour. Sounds, um, I'm gonna look through. I'll look through our list and see if I can. Veronica. No. <laughs> mm. I'll look through the list and see if anything jumps out that sounds like that because okay. offhand that is not ringing a bell whatsoever I sort of feel like maybe it is but I don't know if I'm gaslighting myself into thinking that happened anyway anyways yeah I'm like oh no at this point because she's obviously <laughs> like immediately become un uh, unhealthily obsessed with this guy right that she doesn't know okay so this is where I wrote Jake's wife is wearing a pink fedora and oh my god. Why? As, what, why? What a, why? That hat was what so a choice. bad choice. As, as startling as it was for me to see, because I was like, this movie is from 2020, <laughs> like, what's happening? It does actually play a pretty big role in the movie, <laughs> but what so a dumb. weird choice. Like, she could have been wearing a sun hat, she could have been the wearing any... But, but, but... She could have been wearing, like, a regular hat, not a bright pink, like, that just came out of the box like shock and also pink fedora like they also made a choice to like have everything she wears be pink and i was like strange but okay hey, she's, got, um, she's got her fashion sure. they had they had just announced the barbie movie she was like <laughs> okay that's fair i that's fair that's totally fair i have yeah okay we'll get to it so um this is when we find out that her mom who is I, I the worst. Yeah, yeah, she she is awful. No, I was gonna say I hesitate. To, movie. I hesitate to just call somebody somebody that's like a like a boss bitch an actual bitch, but she is highly she's a very verbally abusive to everybody in this movie. I'm not gonna so, I'm not gonna let anyone slander somebody that was in RoboCop and she was in RoboCop. So best character well, in this movie. <laughs> Who was she in RoboCop? I don't know. Some like fucking character way down on the list but that's her top her, her top credit <laughs> a, on letterboxd <laughs> like one of the random Robo, execs she was robocop's wife <laughs> she's in like a shit ton of movies she's just like one of those like pops in for a fucking five minute scene and is gone Car or, uh, actresses it seems yeah so she's terrible uh, and she basically gives him the business um like, essentially, the situation here is that the wife, Annie, her family has a company that sells light fixtures. Uh, and um, the mom is, like, running it, but wants Jake to step up and run it. But she can't trust him because he's a, he's apparently a fucking idiot. And it makes um, no sense. Why do you want him to take over your company when you like clearly hate him and think he's I know the stupidest person to exist? I need to and know literally. how this company sells like light fixtures is like apparently just a multi million dollar a year venture for this lady. Well, everyone needs lights. 
It, like yeah, they, light, they yeah. like, lights are expensive. They're like, oh, lights well, you, are a like, fixture. They they make it sound like selling this business, they're going to be set for life. <laughs> yeah, they do. So, um, yes, she wants him to take over the company. Um, they they basically, and he's like, she's like, where did you go at two o'clock? And he t- tells them that like he's trying to take flying lessons, and they think he's literally the dumbest person in the world for wanting to take flying lessons. And she's like, uh, Annie that night is arguing with Jake about it because she was saying like, let's go on vacation. I want to go to Hawaii. And he's like, we don't have money for that. And then she's like, well, how do we have money for flying lessons? And they're like bickering with each other about it. And he said something like, he like says essentially that she's being like her mom and she gets really pissed off about that and says that he's got sleep on the couch. Hell yeah. Wah, wah. Before that, though, he's like, or Annie is like, how can you fly a plane? You like barely graduated high school. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> like, like, so mean. Yeah. And like, also, like, those things are not related. Like, not comparable. No. <laughs> She's like, don't you need to know math to fly a plane? I'm like, that actually is kind of fair, but you learn that separately, right? Like, yeah, they just, he really poor guy's got no thoughts between his between his eyes so so to speak and he she's like get out of here you sleep on the couch so he does um the next day tanya and jake do flying school and um it's just like a computer simulated flight thingy but she's being like extremely sensual and like whispering into his ear and trying to look down his shirt and stuff which i found hilarious hell yeah uh they're in school like there's people standing around the flight simulation and she's like breathing on his neck and shit um imagine being gets... one of the other students and you're like watching this like yeah yeah literally <laughs> no one awkward. no one seems to like pick up on this whatsoever all the rest of the students are like yeah this is just how flight school works. this is normal yeah yeah exactly um he's doing pretty well but then he gets nervous and crashes And afterwards, he's like, "Um, Mrs. Johnson, or whatever her name was, like, be honest, how am I doing? And she's like, call me Tanya. Sorry, her name is spelled Tanya. I knew somebody named Tanya, and it was pronounced Tanya, so it was very hard for me to not call her that. It's Tanya. And she's like, call me Tanya. Uh, No, actually, you're great. You're really good, actually. You're probably (laughs) the best student I've ever had, so don't even worry about it. And she... Yeah. You are the king of the skies, Jake. So she's like, uh, if you're not doing anything, like, why don't you, why don't I take you up in a plane? So they do that. And she's like, hey, I have to make a delivery uh, to, a, to a parachute school. Do you want to come with me? And he's like, oh, I shouldn't. I have to get home. And she's like, well, it'll only take half an hour. So he's like, okay, let's do it. Then it just cuts to them having dinner. And I was like, weird. Uh, and so she, <laughs> she basically like, he doesn't... like, she's like holding him hostage because she waited until they were in the air in to the be sky. like, oh, yeah. by the way, like, what are you going to yeah. say? Like, no, like put me down. What? Yeah. He's like, I need to get back. And she's like, oh, it, it won't take that long. But like, so he didn't have time to do that. But now he's, I don't know. It was just, it was really strange. It cuts to them being to, at dinner and she asks how long he's been married because she sees the ring and he says six years. And then um, this is when she kind of says, oh, I wasn't married, but that was like my partner that, um, you know, died in the accident. And um, he's like, oh, I mean, sorry, I already knew all that because I Googled you before I took the class or whatever. So I was like, why the fuck are you bringing it up? Then he, this is where I feel uh, he is already kind of, like, overstepping the boundaries of their relationship. If, like, because he's, like, he reveals to her that, like, his wife is not cool with him doing the flight lessons and that he's been sleeping on the couch. That is not information you need to tell a stranger. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, no, he's immediately. Stranger, your teacher. Sh- well especially your teacher this is you know and it's like he's already divulging intimate details about his life in a weird way and so but so he he says i've been sleeping on the couch she immediately confesses to him that when he walked in the in the the class the first day she couldn't take her eyes off of him and also she lied about there being a delivery so that he would hang out with her (laughs) 
<laughs> and he doesn't really seem to think that this is a red flag at all. Because he's like, um, oh, haha, oh, okay. And she's like, yeah, there's a motel around the corner. Do you want to go, like, chill? And he's like, um, probably I shouldn't do that. Very, and she was like... Very aggressive. Like, I don't think this dude's dumb. I think he, like, just actively wants to cheat. Like, the whole movie, it doesn't... It play, like, especially, like, going into, like, this. I'm just like, he's not, like... It's not like he's falling for something. Like, he's actively, like, participating by going, like... It's not like she's like, hey, come do this delivery for me in this motel room. Well, it seems to me that he is, like, I think that they are playing him as if he is just oblivious to what's going on. But I was like, he's kind of actively participating in the intimacy. Like, like they're trying to make it seem like he doesn't realize like what he's yeah, just like, like he's oh, supposed I'm just to be being, naive. We're just being buddies, right? But and I'm like, he's, sir, <laughs> he's like literally about to take his clothes off when he's just like, I don't know if I should do this. And I'm like, so you know, I mean, you know what you're doing, right? So she, so yeah, so she says like, I couldn't take my eyes off of you. Also, I lied to hang out with you, and he's just kind of like, oh, he <laughs> he. So she said, there's a motel around the corner. Like, do you want to go relax? And he says, oh, I, I shouldn't do that. I need to get back to my wife. And she's like, so you can sleep on the couch? And he goes, so I can sleep on the couch and kind of giggles. And then on Tubi, there's a commercial break. And so I wrote, he rejects her. But then immediately <laughs> after the commercial break, they're just in a hotel room making out. And I was like, huh? Yeah, Tubi got you. Uh, you, so, you are getting sure more did. commercials. I, I got I that commercial, commercial too. But it also, like, there's a line where he goes, oh my gosh, I've never done this before. And I was like, yeah. done what? <laughs> like, have sex? Like, cheat on your wife? Like, <laughs> what have you never done? Maybe it's both. Maybe. But he's still a virgin after six years of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? I gotta say. I'm married to somebody wearing that fedora. I'd probably be a virgin too. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. So yeah. They're in the hotel room making out. He's like, I've never done this before. He takes off his clothes, and it, they're like all silly because he's all being, you know, uh, what's it called? Like, he's all being like, I'm clumsy. Hehe. <laughs> And they're, like, making out, and then he just said, like, uh, I can't do this, like, sorry, I'm married, and he leaves. Or, he doesn't leave, but he's like, I can't do this. Which, fair, like, you have, you have, you have the right to change your mind, it's fine. But she goes in the bathroom and, like, has a minor freak out, and then, um, comes back out, and it's just like, hey, let's just pretend this didn't happen, don't even worry about it, let's keep doing flying lessons. Why don't you bring your wife over to the school and I'll fly you in the plane for free? And he's just like, sounds great. Okay. Like, why? <laughs> why? Why wouldn't you just be this like, nope, way. sorry, gotta go. Okay. Yeah. So I dated this guy, my ex, a while ago. He's never going to hear this, I hope. But <laughs> he's, there a, was... he, uh, he's a Patreon subscription at the 10, so yeah. sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, he... Um, <laughs> He had this friend that was, like, obsessed with him. And she would call him and, like, be really inappropriate. And I was, like, 19 or 20. So I was, I didn't really, like, know how to handle it or whatever. Like, he was just, like, it's fine. She's whatever. Like, I don't care about her. But she would keep calling. And she invited us to go out to, like, stay with her. And she was, like, oh, bring your girlfriend. And I was like, no, this is a way that girls are mean. It's like a setup so that women can be really shitty to other women. And like, that was all I could think about was like, oh, they're going to go out together. And she's going to be like, oh, Jake, you're so amazing. Let me just like breathe in your ear and look at your chest hair and like be a total bitch to your wife. <laughs> like that, to, I was like, this is totally what's going to happen, which it is not what happens. But in my mind, that's what was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I want, so, I, want, yeah, so, I want the movie where these just these three become like a thruple. <laughs> yeah. No. They're yeah. all... They could live on a plane just, that just like is flying on autopilot all the time. Yeah. The dream life. Yeah. <laughs> it's the dream life. <laughs> well, she's got a nice crate to sleep in. What else? <laughs> yeah. So, um, he says, yeah, sounds great. 
So they <laughs> go up. They go up in the plane. Um, Annie, who is Jake's wife, is sitting in the front seat, and um, the they're basically incredible. like. <laughs> kind of nervous because she's being i'm gonna just say she is being a little unhinged she's just like flying's great good this is the best thing ever and like annie continues to be kind of a bitch about jake's like flying abilities or whatever too like they all are this entire time and she basically like what turns out to be a fake out but tanya tanya like pretend like like flies the plane sideways so that Tanya is like facing the ground in the plane and then like pushes her out but it was just like a goof I was like I was I was Catholic yeah, I was like all right I'm in <laughs> yeah and uh then sh- and then you know of course Annie is like freaking out like oh my god like stop whatever she's like you don't have wings you can't fly he 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 and Annie's like no what the fuck's wrong with you <laughs> Afterwards, uh, Annie kind of is like, uh, she really freaked me out. And fucking Jake is just like, huh, everything seemed fine to me. And I'm like, all right, okay. I'm starting to see what people are saying if, about like, you, bro. If this was a real scenario where all of a sudden the plane sideways and they like, whoever's flying it opens my door, I am punching every fucking dial in that plane. Because I'm like, if this is happening, you're going too. <laughs> So that is that is what it is, right? Um, the next time that they're doing lessons, again, like it does seem as if he just started these flying lessons, and he's like already just in the plane all the time with her from now on. After like the third it's lesson, which crazy. seems crazy. Like they don't give any sort of like time frame, so this seems like he's been taking classes for like a week. Two days, yeah. It's, like, been no time. And he's now just flying planes all over the place. So they're in the plane. She, um... The other thing that's, like, really interesting to me about these kinds of movies is that the... They, like, don't really show us a perspective of what, um... Like, normally the Lifetime movies will follow, like, whoever... Like, they would be following, um, I, t- I totally forgot her name, Tanya, from, like, her point of view, because, like, she's the one that's, like, gone through the trauma and is, like, dealing with this situation. But they're kind of following him in that, like, the stuff that's going on behind the scenes needs to be discovered later. And they're, like, not showing us that she's stalking him, essentially, right? Like, so they're flying over his neighborhood and he's just like oh he he wow this is where i live <laughs> fucking idiot also because yeah. how, how do you she's not like notice? so weird who could yeah, have weird. yeah let's go to let's go fly over this sh- random shopping center and he's like oh there's my house so you can also see her texting it on the side like whatever and so he's like oh there's my house and he's like looking down over the house as they're flying over it and he sees what appears to be his wife, uh, and you know it's her because she's got a pink fedora <laughs> on, and um, greeting another man in the driveway outside, and Tanya, of course, is pretending like she doesn't notice anything because Jake is, like, distraught at this point, right? So that night he comes home, and I'm really confused about this because uh, uh, Annie is like, oh, welcome home, like, oh, I, I went to school and I got my paper, my term paper, like and she, um, uh, uh, accepted or whatever and she, and she put says out she a payment put plan, a down payment, a down on payment on whole foods on dinner from like, whole what foods is, <laughs> what does that mean whole foods is expensive whole, whole foods is now doing like layaway <laughs> apparently a whole down well, they, payment on a ten thousand dollar dinner right like i know that they do uh things where you can like put in orders for like thanksgiving dinner or something like that but i don't understand I don't understand her using the term put a down payment on dinner it is, that she's about to serve to him. It's somehow the most baffling line to me in this entire it movie. Was just, <laughs> yeah, it's just a joke about how Whole yeah. Foods is expensive. Well, I just but, immediately was but, just like, I need to know what she bought because, like, this is insane. <laughs> also, why are they name dropping Whole Foods? Seems very strange to me. <laughs> Um, they had to go get Whole Foods, like they were shopping at Whole Foods while filming. I'm like, man, fuck this. <laughs> I did. You know what? I have, to con- I have to confess, though. Like, I 
wasn't wearing my glasses. <laughs> so when they show like Annie supposedly cheating on Jake, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but apparently, like, they didn't look alike. Like, they didn't well, have his no. like, yeah, you, built. You, like, you just don't... All you see is, like, the top of the fedora. Like, she's just... Yeah. I, the planning and timing of this is, like, unhinged that she would be able to pull this off more than once. <laughs> to be, the like... The explanation for it's so funny. It's, like, <laughs> trying to plan two people showing up at just the right time that you're like flying over more than once is like crazy. <laughs> well, I have an issue because later Tanya shows him pictures of supposedly Annie. These women have two completely different colored <laughs> hair and you can see the model's hair it's... in the first picture. Her hair is like so dark brown, it's almost black. And Annie has like blonde hair. So I was like, you don't know your <laughs> wife at all. Well, you're not taking you into account her. that Jake is the... dumb, remember? He's, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, he just doesn't, <laughs> he deserved to get tricked like that, idiot. Like, you don't even know what color your wife's hair is. He was about to push a crate of what he was told was fish food into the ocean to feed fish. He's not smart no he's he's dumb as a stump like <laughs> literally the only thing he has going for him is that he's like he's got relatively bright cute. white teeth definitely <laughs> so he confronts annie about having seen her you know cheating and she's like what are you actually talking about i was at school uh, you can call my professor. Like, I don't know what you're like, what is going on here? And he basically is just like, you need to figure out what you want. We're taking a break. And he like gets his stuff and he's like, don't text or call me. And he leaves to go sleep at his friend's house. And I was like, so the, this, this thing to me is like really confusing too, because it's like, he thinks she's cheating. She obviously, and she doesn't act like, at this point, we don't actually know that she wasn't cheating, right? Like, we're led to... Well, except for the fact that, again, they were two completely different actresses. <laughs> uh, they're, for all intents and purposes, we are supposed to think that she is actually cheating. Even though yeah. it was, like, painfully obvious to, like, pick up on, you know, like, what's her face? I mean, texting I, you know, yeah, and, like, all that stuff. Whatever. Yeah, it's like, it's clear. But, if like, you have any idea of the type of movie you're watching, it's, like, clear that this is, like, yeah. set Clearly up from fake. the beginning. But if you're just, like some weirdo watching this type of movie for the first time, you're probably like, oh my god. Yes. Right, and, but like, so he's like, uh, you know, very obviously she's been like verbally uh, kind of abusive to him and like their their relationship doesn't seem great. So like the minute he thinks that she's cheating, they're going to go on a break, but then they both kind of act like the break isn't them figuring out how to reconcile their marriage because they're both um like... I don't know. They just act like the break is them kind of like not being married anymore. And I was like, that's not really how that works, but okay. Also, why um, is his, he goes to stay with his like male friend and that spare room looks like some old ladies. Like guess. I was confused about the headboard. I was like, that's your bro's house. That seems strange to me. My For me, it was the uh, curtains. Yeah. Like very weird. My theory is that maybe like, her it's... bro lives with his mom. <laughs> My theory is just like that his friend is married and has terrible, terrible taste in uh, decor. Maybe. So he does another thing that he really, again, shouldn't be doing, which is that he immediately tells Tanya about them <laughs> taking a break. You didn't tell all of your teachers in school all of your like personal life details no. every moment? <laughs> especially because I'm just going to go back to this, especially because she's already like, They've he already almost, almost fucked. slept with her. <laughs> yeah. So this seems extremely more inappropriate. So he's like, yeah, we are taking a break because she cheated on me. Oh man. She immediately asks him out again and he just says it's too soon. So that's why I'm saying they're acting like this break. Oh, I'm sorry. Then later they do say separated, but I'm just like, aren't you supposed to be like, I don't know, whatever. Who cares? Um, 
putting way too much effort into Deadly I'm, Mall. I'm, yeah, it's I, just I a plot that. device. It doesn't it's matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. So she asked him out. He says, sorry, it's too soon. Because, like, they, you know, they just got separated yesterday. But it's fine. Uh, some flight attendant girls come to Tanya's teaching school to try and, like, snipe students from her <laughs> for this other guy named Gonzo. <laughs> and um, Tanya is like, go, get out of here. Get out of here. Go on, get out of here. Like, shoots them <laughs> off or whatever. I, but he's like. So jealous. I love this weird, just like 10 minute plot thing in this of just, where you're just like, yeah, of course there's like a competing. Another flight very, school. Very, very angry rivals of like flight academies between Tanya and Gonzo. <laughs> yeah. And so. Um, he ends up going to the open house of this like flight school or whatever, and uh, he meets the captain, whose name is Gonzo, who is like, um, I'm being taught by Tanya, and he's just like, oh yeah, yeah, I know Tanya, and then just immediately talks about how sh the plane crashed and the other guy Jacob died, and I was like, <laughs> okay, why do we keep bringing this up? Can we chill? And he's basically just being like, he's like smoozing Jake into. To, like oh come to my flight school i was i do tricks and i do stunts and shit like he's that like, this is where it's he's at literally like, yeah 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 you can go to like tanya if you want to fly those little rinky dink planes but if you want to fly like a b12 bomber and like fucking whatever like these like fancy huge planes and i'm like no i do not want to do that <laughs> I, do, I don't I don't want to do but, tricks and stuff. But then it's also, like, when you get, like, in a couple scenes to, like, Gonzo actually flying a plane, it's an even worse plane than Tanya's. It's literally <laughs> one of those, like, old-school planes that doesn't even have a fucking, yeah, like... like little, little prop plane. Yeah, like, you're literally, like, in the elements. It's There's, like, Snoopy nothing plane. holding you in that if you flip up... Like, Snoopy plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a Snoopy it plane. Is. It's literally a Snoopy plane. Oh, so I'd, I'd watch a movie about Snoopy and Gonzo. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop, what you don't know is that uh, Gonzo was actually the Red Baron or whatever that song was about. <laughs> he, he, like the Red Baron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. he crashed into a giant pizza. Sad. Nope. Sorry. It's a way to, hell of a way to go. So he goes, whatever, gets smoothed. That night, <laughs> that night uh, Tanya calls him and is immediately like hitting on him. Like, I'm just sitting here in my nightgown thinking about you she's like and... i literally i was like what is, are, are we about to see like a phone sex scene what's happening because she's like <laughs> in her 90 she's like putting her hand like goes like below camera frame where i'm just like <laughs> what is about to happen and then like nothing <laughs> she I... they they she thought so yeah. she's like can i see you tomorrow like how's it going whatever i'm just thinking about you <laughs> I, and I love his responses because she's like, I just was sitting here thinking about you. And he was like, really? <laughs> like, he just doesn't I, understand. Like, I love that every single time she interacts with him, she's like, oh, how are things with your wife? And he's like, terrible. Never going to see her again. And she's like, oh, you want to go get coffee? <laughs> yeah. Immediately. So now. Yep. Um, he, so the, the conversation devolves very quickly from her obviously trying to have phone sex with him because he says like, Hey, by the way, I am definitely going to Gonzo's flight school, which means I can't afford both. I'm quitting. I think it's just better that I quit. And she's like, well, we can still be friends, right? Like we can, you and I can just hang out. And he's like, no, I don't think that's a good idea. And she obviously has a breakdown. Right. And she says, um, am I coming on too strong? Yeah, girl. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, just a bit. From the moment, from the moment you met him, you have been extremely aggressive towards him. Yeah. But he is. Bro, he's like put it in your pants. Like, yeah. <laughs> no. The whole time I was like, you were so fucking horny. Like, you need to reel it in, girl. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but did you ever consider so, the fact that he uh, has brown hair? Oh my god, I'm yeah. sorry. I forgot. He's... Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just get it... naked right now. I forgot. So, yeah, he's like, no, 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 you didn't come on too strong. It's totally fine. I just, like, don't think we can hang out and stuff because, like, I'm taking 
classes from someone else, and I just think that would be weird. Yeah, that's, yeah, okay, the, that's, yeah, that's the weird that's, part. That's why it's weird. <laughs> yeah. And so she is, um, like, you know, she starts freaking out. She starts crying or whatever. And she's, like, literally sobbing. And he's just like, all right, we'll see you later. And she's like, <laughs> bye. And he just hangs up. And he's like, well, that went well. And he just, like, lays back in the bed, like, I, what a great guy. I enjoy my friendship with her. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is very normal. Um, you know, now that we're talking like, about it, like, talking it through again, I really enjoy what a dumb asshole this guy is. It's delightful. <laughs> not even like he's not even like an asshole. He is. He's just, just it's oblivious. just like completely unaware. Yeah, just yeah no like, idea oh. what's happening around him. No There's social nothing, cue. Nothing going, going on, on here. Right there. Nope. It's the, ab- the absolute epitome of like golden retriever boyfriend. <laughs> yes. Kind of, kind of, except he's less loyal. He's lacking the loyal yes, part. Yeah. 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 Um, so there's like a small scene where Annie tells her mom that they're separated and everything that happened and her mom (laughs) immediately, he, she's like, don't say anything to him because I want to just try and figure this out. Like, don't worry. And she's like, oh, don't worry, honey. I'm not going to say anything. She immediately comes over to where he's staying and he just like ignores her and gets in the car and drives away. So she follows him. Right. So (laughs) now we're at Gonzo's flight school Tanya is there. In what Gonzo's appeared- flight school is such a powerful three-word like, I combination. Just, uh, this dude needs fucking Gonzo's nose from, like, the Muppets. Yeah. Or yes, it should have straight up been Gonzo from the Muppets. Gonzo. No explanation. I... Oh, my God. That would have made this movie perfect. I would have no <laughs> notes. If, ever, if everyone but Jake was a Muppet. Not even that, just the one. Just <laughs> randomly, Gonzo from the Muppets is teaching him how to fly. <laughs> I could see why he would want to go to Gonzo's flight yeah, school. Yes, so why would anyone though. go to anyone I'm... else ever? He's like, listen, no offense, Tanya, but Gonzo from the Muppets runs this flight there school, would, so I gotta go. Like chick- she would have understood. Chickens running around yeah, all over I think the place. So. Yeah. Incredible. So at the flight school, Tanya appears in t- to be in what I thought was a disguise, except it's not because <laughs> she goes to Gonzo's plane, sabotages the plane, and then immediately walks up to Gonzo and is like, hey. And I was like, girl, what? <laughs> hey, it's me, Tanya. Look. She does that twice where she's like in her disguise and then she shows up still in her <laughs> disguise. If she, I was like, okay, I, girl. So I they, wish they would have just put like a fake mustache on her. <laughs> it's just so weird because then he's just like, Tanya, what are you doing here? And she's just like, oh, I came here to poach your students. Isn't that cool? And he's like, yeah, whatever, bitch. And um, so the rest <laughs> of the students <laughs> show up. He, uh, she, she was talking about trying to sway students coming from his school to hers, and he was like, what are you going to teach them, crash landings? And I was yeah. like, Jesus Christ! Everybody is so... Like, cavalier like, about her surviving a fucking so... plane crash. Literally, yeah. They're, they're really digging in on her. So... Everybody else shows up. So he's like, I'm about to do some tricks for the, for like a d- demonstration for the students. Like, why don't you stay and watch? Which I think is very strange. So they all show up. Um, Jake is obviously like, what the, like, what is she doing here? But actually doesn't seem that concerned about it. So they're all just like hanging out. And Gonzo says, okay, everybody, I'm ready for the demonstration. I got something wacky and crazy for you kids. Who wants to go up in the plane with me? <laughs> Tanya immediately is like, oh, fuck. So he, of course, Gonzo picks Jake and Tanya is like, no, no, uh, no, like, seems like a bad idea. You probably shouldn't do that. And he's just like, okay, lady who crashed her plane and killed her (laughs) co-pilot, like, essentially. And I was like, they really love to have her nose in it. This man is out of pocket. (laughs) I would also like to reiterate that we see the crash and what happened was in no way her fault. I, it's like <laughs> the, it was a thunderstorm and the engine stalled and they crashed because they had no radio signal or anything. It wasn't like they just were being sloppy and they crashed. Like it was a <laughs> not in her power and it was 
traumatic and everybody just cannot stop making fun of her about it which seems insane <laughs> so, well, i wonder if she loses her shit <laughs> I, yeah i picture gonzo like showing up at her hospital and like hey way to fly bitch uh-huh idiot nerds. <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's so like, like leaving a card for like yeah. free lessons. <laughs> like, Sorry you lived. Pretty much. They they all but say you should have died and Jacob should have lived. Like they're very rude to her. And he's like, What's the problem? Whatever, like, you're crazy. Like, let's go, Jake. Um but then thankfully and weirdly, Jake's <laughs> mother in law shows up to the flight school and interrupts them. And the assistant takes it, takes Gonzo inside and said, oh, absolutely, you cannot take a student up when you do your tricks because we don't have the insurance yeah, for it. And he's like, sure. Yeah, right. And so she, he's like, okay, whatever the fuck. Let's, let's do this. Um, and um, yeah. he's just like, fine, I'll go do Definitely it. They are... Work. All the plain <laughs> stuff in this is very goofy. And then, so, the mother-in-law is, like, trying to argue with Jake about, you know, um, the whole situation. And she says, you have the mental capacity of a donut. <laughs> <laughs> he is star- standing there with the blankest face, like, look on his face of anyone I've ever seen. I, so, uh, I'm, you know, have, I'm coming around to their side. I have a new theory that, like, whoever wrote this is somebody that, like gets bullied for being a pilot. <laughs> oh, All of these gonna... movies seem weirdly like, yeah, like pointed. I was gonna say so... they hate women. Like, every woman is awful. Yeah, that too. <laughs> they were wronged yeah. by a female pilot. Yeah. And now they're <laughs> out to slander the names of all women and pilots, apparently. <laughs> Uh, so his mother-in-law is like giving him the business about this and he's just like, save it lady. I'm going to go watch this demonstration. (laughs) So they're watching Gonzo fly around and do tricks. I guess most of what we see is him in the cockpit going, I'm the best. (laughs) Woohoo. You know? Um, and like they're all watching. He's like flying around in the air for a little while. The, um, I was going to call her stewardess, but like the assistant, is basically like starting her presentation where she's like, here at Gonzo's flight school, the most important thing to us is safety. And then Gonzo crashes behind her. <laughs> I was great comedic time. I was here. so hoping they had the camera like focused on her, right? That he was going to like <laughs> <Hit> fly <her. laughs> into, yeah, into the hangar and take out like her oh, and geez. the mother in law and a bunch the of the students. <laughs> Everyone's dead. Um, so that happens, right? Then it cuts to Jake being back at his job and Tanya comes to visit him and is like, hey, can I get a hug? Absolutely not, <laughs> ma'am. I fucking hate, I fucking hate that can I get Weird. a hug from somebody that you very obviously do not have any intention of hugging. And she basically is like, oh, it's been a while. I haven't heard from you. It's been like a week maybe, right? And she asks if him and Annie are back together. And he says, no, we're still not. And then this is where she's like, oh, do you want to go grab a coffee? And he's like, "Um, I can't. I'm at work. Come here, though. And they go back into the break room (laughs) where, um, yeah, he's like, they're not together. But even though he's not back together with his wife, he's not allowed to take flying lessons anymore. (laughs) Because the mother-in-law and his wife are mad about I mean, it and i was like okay. i feel like if i saw somebody crash a plane in front of my eyes i would probably also be like maybe i should take a yeah a break for start, at least a week and think about start this start reevaluating <laughs> i also feel like it's really weird that nobody suspected like this woman who r- runs like a a competing business shows up the day that you crash your plane and, like, nobody well, questions well, I, hold on. the plane being sabotaged. It makes sense because she was in disguise. They don't know it was her. <laughs> yeah. She had a hat on. They were like, oh, weird, that mechanic could have probably been helpful yeah. if she would have checked out the plane first. Didn't realize it was Tanya. She had a hat on, Katie. 
She took the head off. Well, no, but they, they <laughs> she, talked to her. They the knew it was off. her. I still think it's weird that nobody, like, like questioned hey, dummy, her being she there. she took the hat off. Even, okay, even uh, fucking uh, Jake, which at this point, obviously, I don't expect him to pick up on anything, but she was, like, so adamant about him not getting in the plane, and then the plane crashes, and nobody suspects anything. They're just like, wow, what a weird coincidence. Look, Katie, hmm. all pilots are dumb. Well... So she's like, oh, uh, well, why don't I just give you lessons for free in secret? Nobody has to know about it. And he's like, okay, great. <laughs> oh, sounds tight. Right? Uh, the mother couldn't be a problem at all. This guy has, like, no spine. Like, so he's no. so, like, agreeable. You could be like, oh, well, why don't I just, like, I don't even fucking know anything. And he'd be like, oh, okay, I'm Jake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Just nothing, nothing going on upstairs. No. Not, just hear not something a, that sounds like kind of fun. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah, but hear me out. Yeah, Maybe sure, he I'll just recognizes it. a good deal. <laughs> that's true. You know how much flying lessons are for free? The other thing that yeah, that's I, true. I find so funny is that, like, he just randomly decided he wanted to get, like, do the pilot lessons, like, for no reason. And he just kind of like, I don't know, I just kind of think it'd be fun. Like, I kind of want to do something different. And in this scene, um, T- Tanya is like, uh, you were born to be a pilot, remember? <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. We've really escalated it, his dedication to being a pilot It at makes this point. the gonzo aspect of it even make less sense because it's like, like, yeah, like he was just like, I don't know. I think this would just be like a fun hobby. And then the gonzo's like, don't you want to be like Tom Cruise in Top Gun? And he's like, Fuck yes, yeah, don't I Don't you do. want to be a blue angel? And he's like, oh, actually, I do. Thank you for asking. <laughs> now, now that you say it. <laughs> I think he literally just like, um, needs someone to just be like, you want to do this? And he's like, yes, I do. Yeah, He's got yeah. That, that Joe Rogan syndrome where he just agrees <laughs> with whatever the last thing anyone said to him is. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I I wanted to do something different one, with my life. Like, I thought it'd be fun to take lessons. And she was like, oh, weren't you born? Literally born? Haven't you want to be a pilot since you were, you like, two years are old? The Jesus and he's like, pilots, Jake. Yeah, the Sky King. And he's like, oh, you're right, actually. Yes, I, I was born to be this thing that I just decided to do two months she ago. Picked up or up, like, two weeks ago, Simba whatever. The Lion King. Exactly. So he's like, yeah, I'll do it. The mother-in-law comes in and is just like, what's going on here? And he's like, oh, nothing. This is my friend. We'll see you later. The mother-in-law immediately Googles Tanya. And... Um, normal, normal reaction. Shows up to Tanya's flight school and is like, hey, stay away from my son-in-law. Like, he is a fucking idiot, but like, like, stop messing with my life. I don't know whatever. if you heard. It's like, he's like a late, donut. too. He, oh yeah, she's. It's like it's it's at night when she like, like shows up at the nine p.m. Room. So the thing that happens next to me might be the most insane thing in this movie because they're standing there <laughs> arguing, Both. and the mother-in-law is like, "Stay away from my son-in-law, you weird bitch!" Like I saw you at the flight school thing and all of this shit. Like stay away from him. Just like stop. And um, Tanya's like, "I don't really know what you're talking about, but sounds good." And the mother-in-law is like, if you come near my family, I'm going to fucking kill you. Uh, See ya, I got to be in Santa Barbara now. And Tanya's like, oh, why don't I just fly you to Santa Barbara for free? Yeah, why don't you just and the leave mother-in-law your car like, here All right. on the tarmac? Yeah, uh, I'll do it for free. And she's like, oh, okay, pers- like lady that I just had an altercation with, let me go on yeah. the plane with you. Right? Is Everyone in this movie is can, dumb. Can you just... Yeah drive to an airplane hangar like i assume you have to have some yeah, sort of like it's a... no it's a, it's if it's like a hangar where it's like a prop like planes people, and stuff if people just have their planes and there's flight school i think you can just try that up. seems not smart unsafe yeah that just makes me think i could just go and just steal a plane maybe you could yeah maybe. you definitely could. all right well if i'm not on the episode next week You'll know <laughs> we know what happened. Yeah, and we you also definitely... know that we got to look for all the penguins too. Because if I know one thing about Nathan, it's that he wants to steal a penguin. Yeah, I'm just gonna fly to Antarctica. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, seems safe. Um, so they're flying, 
they're they're up there and Tanya is kind of giving her the mother-in-law I don't even know what her name was but it doesn't matter giving her like the rundown of like how you fly a plane and everything and she's like oh that seems like a lot to remember there's no way that fucking idiot Jake is gonna know anything about, <laughs> about how to fly a plane and, and Tanya is like really offended she's like oh he's actually a really good pilot and he's actually really smart and the mother-in-law just keeps going on and on and on about how fucking stupid Jake is and then she says she basically is just like, if you think that Jake is smart and a good pilot, then you're just as stupid as he is. No wonder you crashed your plane. <laughs> God damn, lady. <laughs> I am just like, like, okay, don't get me wrong. Tanya does a lot of really terrible things to people in this movie, but can you give her a break about this fucking plane crash? insane to me uh but because of that tanya literally goes off the deep end and does in fact push the mother-in-law out of <laughs> her plane fucking rocks. amazing <laughs> i, I was, like, that was like another like dream sequence where i was like oh <laughs> yeah they got you i they, they got no, me she, there was she, a commercial that's how they got me yep um which seems crazy because I was like, how is she going to cover this up? Because I feel it should be pretty easy to tell that somebody fell out of a plane. Um, yeah, but then... This is the conversation Caitlin and I were having. Is like, they're just like, yeah, it was clearly suicide. And I'm like... Yes! I'm like... Can we talk about this? <laughs> because what are the odds, right? That, like, first of all, she happened to land in a place that's, like, famous for suicide... But what medical examiner can't tell the difference between jumping off of a the building height? and being thrown out of a fucking plane? Yeah, like, it's not like, like they don't, like, they're in what I'm guessing is, like, it looks like kind of suburban Los Angeles kind of area. Where I'm like, there's not, like, skyscrapers. Like, you're not, like, at an Empire State Building level. So it would be, like, I'll say four stories max is a wild difference than in a fucking airplane. <laughs> mm. I... Katie's like, as a medical examiner... I don't know about that. Yeah, I think you have to jump higher than seven floors for it to be successful. I think there are still pretty high buildings, but I, I still feel like, yeah, you could definitely tell the difference between jumping off a building and the velocity that your body would gain from falling I, out of I the airplane. I feel like falling out of the airplane, she would be like pancaked. Yeah, like obliterated, unfortunately. Right, another Unfo another uh, unfortunate Asante. Yeah. 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 Throw a body out um, of an airplane and off a building. I, I have seen CSI, okay? They also are in Las Vegas. Oh, is that where um, they're at? They're in Vegas in this? Oh no, I, I just I oh. was kidding. They're definitely around LA. Cause like somewhere. it's like anytime they show like sort of the ground from the airplane, they're like clearly over like there's like just people's houses and shit. And so like I'm like baffled at like what area she managed to like throw this lady from that like someone was just like, Yeah, clearly she just fell well, off the building. Uh, again, it was definitely, yeah, like, a city part of it for them to say that this is, like, a common place that people do this. And uh, then after... But I, at first I was just like, how do you cover this up? Oh, yeah, because, like, the police are idiots. That's how you cover it up. <laughs> because she lands her plane and then drives the mother-in-law's car and parks it down the street <laughs> from this building where her body was found. And they're just like... And then... This lady's the got coroner, so much fucking time on her hands. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, doesn't she run? Like, what is going on with her that she's got all this time during the week also to, like, hire somebody to come to that guy's this house was, a bunch of times? She must be charging like, a fortune strange. for these flight classes, because, like... Everyone yeah. was going to Gonzo's school. She, it wasn't very busy at hers. That's true. Uh, Gonzo took all her... Flying her lessons people. are very expensive. Like, Oh, I'm sure. I met someone that was training to be a pilot, and he said, all told, it's, like, 80 grand. Oh, woof. So, is that pilot school to, like, fly a commercial plane, though? Yes. I think that was the ultimate goal. Uh, yeah. Katie and Lindsay, have either of you seen a single Santa Seeks Miss Claus? <laughs> 
with, with <laughs> starring. I, what a question! I think Steve Gutenberg as Santa Claus because uh, what the mom in this is uh, in that movie. Okay, I'm in. It's, I think a Hallmark movie. Oh well, sign me That's up. Why I was like, I'm one of you have probably seen this. This movie looks incredible. Uh, I'm looking. I probably have, to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, it's not impossible. What an incredible <laughs> title! <laughs> yeah, it's from 2004. Hmm. Yes, I'll have to be on the lookout next uh, holiday season. <laughs> Steve Gutenberg as Santa is incredible. Incredible casting. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. He does have like a jolly kind of look about him, like, I her, guess. Her filmography is insane because it's like shit like that, but it's like Robocop, Adventures in Babysitting, Relic, Sudden Death, Retribution, Santa with Muscles. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I found out I found out who she is in Robocop, by the way. I, I remember like uh, looking and she's just like way down on the cast list. Uh, she's she's the woman that uh she pours the cocaine on, oh. her, on her boobs for uh, Miguel Ferrer to snort off. Perfect. <laughs> oh, man. Incredible. She's, what a connection. She's, she's in a lot of crazy stuff. She's in Was a she lot in of Seinfeld? Christmas movies. Bring back the Seinfeld Honestly, connection? Honestly, probably. Oh, damn. Let's see. It's been years. I'll see if I, I see if anyone. <laughs> it has been years. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't use, uh, it's not good I don't use IMDb anymore. So. No. I need to see this movie called Fatal Fixer Upper that is directed by the guy who did a bunch of the Puppet Master movies. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm in. You sold me. Vivian and Ryan's newfound paradise soon turns into a living nightmare. Oh, a mysterious man, nam, ma, blah, 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 mysterious man named Josh in a beautiful California suburb. I bet you... That it's the same house from Deadly Dill. Katie, she is in <laughs> yeah. two episodes of American Dad. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, American Dad fame. All right, anyway. <laughs> okay, what happened? Side oh, track. she pushes the mother-in-law out the out the plane. Then she moves the car. Oh, I was going to say, okay, fast forward. The coroner then... Desperately, I need coroners to have a little bit of bedside manner because essentially what happens is that they call Annie and he, he's like, hi, this is the coroner. Is your mom's <laughs> name Linda or whatever the fuck? And she's like, yeah, well, she's what dead. happened? <laughs> oh, she's dead. Yes. Um, like ex the way that he breaks the news to her is just fucking awful. And then she kind of like d disassociates because she just got this like horrible news. Right. And she's like holding the phone. And he's like, hello, are you there? <laughs> and I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> crazy. Um, so then it cuts to after the funeral, uh, Jake comes over and essentially it's just like, well, your mom was a horrible bitch. So I'm not really surprised that she did this. <laughs> and Annie's like, um, she I definitely did it. I can't imagine saying that to somebody I was in a relationship <laughs> with, like, at all. Like, they no. have been married for three years. They are still six married. Years. And granted, the, what did I say? Three. three? Whatever, six. Um, they, They're still married. And, like, granted, the mother-in-law did treat him terribly. But how could you ever <laughs> say that? Even if you thought that she cheated on you, like... I just can't he has he has actually no emotion. He just is like, yeah, well she fucking sucks, so <laughs> you know, it is what it is. She's uh, fucking she miserable. Inside thought. If you wanna think that, like yeah. I, that is sure. your right. But like you keep that in. Yeah. Don't like don't thought. vocalize that. Yeah. Uh really terrible and then um he's like, uh it, okay, so Annie's like, Well, what do you want to do about the business? And he's like, Oh, I'm gonna sell it. And I was like, uh, without oh, okay. talking to her, he's decided that he's going to sell her family's business that he only has a stake in because they're married. <laughs> like, he didn't give a shit about it to begin with. And she's like, well, I don't know, like, maybe we should talk about it because it makes us a lot of money. And he was just like, oh, no, I'm going to fucking sell it and buy myself a plane. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, and he, so he leaves or whatever. Uh, um, yeah, he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly planes. And, like... Annie is just kind of like, wow. I, like, 
turned on by the fact that he's like standing up for himself i guess and i was like this is not the right time yes girl. very weird <laughs> like <laughs> any not now um so he Andy, not now. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So he talks to Tanya, and she hits on him, and again, of course. And um, he basically tells her that, like, I think you know, I need to try and get back together with my wife because of all of this stuff that happened. So, like, I'm gonna try and get back together with her. And then Tanya's like, "Oh, wait a second, though. Annie's still cheating on you." Oh well. I I just was worried about you, so I started flying over your house again, and I took more pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she, yeah, so she shows him all of these pictures of Annie like laying in the back by the pool, getting like massaged and like having sex with this guy, supposedly, right? Again, these women look nothing alike, uh, and he's like devastated, of course, because he thinks that this is real. Um, he is like so, the one hundred percent. This dude, three years after this movie, lost all of their money in like an NFT scam. Oh, <laughs> I think so. Definitely, he bought the monkey or yeah. whatever the fuck. He that lost thing was. all of his apes. All oh. of his apes are gone. All my, all my apes gone. <laughs> so he's like. You know, oh, because he's saying, like, I'm going to quit the flying lessons. I'm going to get back together or whatever. So then she's like, oh, well, you're she's still cheating. Here's these pictures. He's devastated. And she's like, do you want to go up on my plane? He's like, yeah. So they go up there. (laughs) She starts, like, kind of taking her shirt off and, like, kissing him and touching his penis. Well, he's fly. He he, is a novice pilot. Like, he has almost no flight time under his wings, so to speak. And she's like trying to give him a mile high club situation. And um, he's like, what are you doing? And she says, I'm giving you a chance at revenge. I'm sorry. Uh, also really a red flag revenge. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then he says, and then he says, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> they, they wrote the rest of the movie around this. Scene. I think so. I think, I think really they did. Um, but then, they go back to her place essentially and they finally do it right uh afterwards they're just having like pillow talk and she's just like oh so like what are you gonna do and he's you know just kind of like talking about what they're gonna do going forward and she's like oh i want to go to mexico we should go tomorrow let's go to mexico and he's just like okay cool (laughs) sir chill the fuck out so, meanwhile, Annie, uh, in her fucking pink fedora, goes to check her mail. She's gotten somebody else's mail. So, she walks across the street and, for the first time in 2020, learns what a ring doorbell is. Uh, she's talking to her friend through her doorbell where her friend's like, hey, sorry your mom. Sorry about your mom. Is like, giving her condolences for the first time through a ring doorbell. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right. That part and- is so weird. Like, the overwrought description of like why someone would purchase a ring camera it was like what? we know what it is we knew yeah, what it was then, four years ago seriously <laughs> and then like the whole conversation is so strange because she's like hey girl i am at the mall but i'll be home soon what what whatever they have the conversation and then annie's like oh i got some of your mail by mistake and she goes oh thanks just put it in the mailbox what the fuck else was she gonna do with it first of all whatever your name is. And then she's like, um, okay, I'll be home in 30 minutes. Talk to you later. And I'm like, this is so weird. This is when Annie's gears started turning and she's like, oh, wait a second. So she asks the lady when she comes home to see... Um, if she could have, like, the footage from the ring camera. If she can have the footage. But, like... The woman gives this throwaway line that essentially is like her husband is a hacker. And so instead of having it be motion detector, it's just on all the time. So she's like, here's this footage. This is just so like CIS, uh, CSI. I love it. He, and I'm like, okay. So um, Annie, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I unfortunately have seen every episode. Lawrence um, Fishburne's here? So it, listen, I've got to say... The show kind of peaked when he was on it. When he left is when it really, really started going downhill. He was only on it for like two seasons or or maybe it was one season. I don't know. That whole, his arc was really actually crazy. Um, Okay. Uh, Annie gets the the footage, right? 
And this feels impossible to me because, like, if it's on all the time, it's so much footage. But she immediately finds footage of strangers pulling into the driveway, getting out of the car. And it's, like, the whole scene <laughs> of what we saw earlier, right? <laughs> and um, so she sees the car, Googles the license plate, gets the address. She's, like, <laughs> fucking Columbo here. Gets the address to the house, goes to the house, and is, like, in her pink fedora, and um, opens the door, and the woman inside is just like, hey, what's up? As if the pink fedora did not stand out to her at all. Uh, like, they're in fashion, Katie. Okay? Yeah, you got, they're I'm all sorry, around town. I, Everybody I has beg one beg your biggest pardon. Absolutely <laughs> not. It was I, 2020. I, it was a different I was time. Saying, I don't know if you remember 2020, but pink fedoras were everywhere. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a pink fedora in my whole life. Everyone That's on Tiger King not. had one. <laughs> Those were cowboy hats. Pink cowboy hats. They're fedoras. You're misremembering. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, she but essentially, this whole conversation just leads to the point that this woman was is a model doing what she thought was a photo shoot at the house. <laughs> and there's kind of like a flashback of Tanya like interviewing and hiring her to do these jobs or whatever and the girl's like well now that I'm thinking about it it was a little weird and also I never saw a photographer but <laughs> they paid me in cash and I was like okay um so yeah so this is this is essentially what happens right Annie texts Jake immediately Tanya framed me I have proof uh but little does she know Tanya and Jake are together so Tanya sees his phone and gets the text and texts her, Annie, meet me at the house. Annie thinks it's Jake. And then Tanya deletes the messages. Tanya tells Jake, um, I have to go run some errands before we fly to Mexico. Why don't you meet me at the airport at three o'clock? <laughs> See ya. Then, meanwhile, I, so, okay. So meanwhile, um, Tanya gets the core form from her first aid kit, you know, it's, it's standard <laughs> yeah. issue. Oh, and every and first also, aid kit. Definitely. A huge glass bottle. Uh, a, a jumbo size bottle uh, in your kit. And also a human sized crate that she loads into her car. Also part of every first aid kit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would say I think um, up until this point, Annie I thought was actually the smartest person in this movie because she was able to like you know, go into like whatever Google, figure this all out. But what she does is she's expecting Jake to meet her at the house that they lived in together. Uh, she hears the doorbell ring and she opens the door and Jake's not there. And then she does the shit that people do in movies for some reason where they walk out and she's like, Jake, Jake, where are you? Why would he ding dong ditch you? <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Absolutely no fucking sense. We've spent like an hour and a half talking about how dumb this guy is. I could absolutely see him being like, you know, it'd be really funny. Uh, or just like, ring the he's doorbell. Like, that's not my house. Yeah, he just went to the, <laughs> <laughs> he's the... I like he when, finally um, answers, he answers the door and he's like, oh, thank God. I've gone to seven houses before this one. <laughs> <laughs> finally I found it. How, like when he flies over the house and sees what he thinks is her, she's like, it must have been a different house. And he was like, I think I know what my own house looks like. <laughs> I'm so sorry. If I saw my house from above in a plane, I'm not really sure that I could be totally well, I, confident. I don't remember if that scene was like the same one, but at some point she's like, oh, let's just like drop down to like 500 feet, which is like still high. But like, I feel like you could probably make out your house from 500 feet. I have no concept you, of what 500 feet you is. You would see so. that Joker car next door, and you'd be like, yep, that's my house. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Um, so, yeah, Tanya is the one that... Also, fucking stupid, because... I mean, it works out for her, but essentially, um, Annie, like, walks out into the middle of the yard, and is like, hello, Jake? Where are you? <laughs> and Tanya runs up behind her and is, like, struggling with her. Um, Annie's, like, screaming... And she drags her inside finally and gets her knocked out. But I was like, middle of the day, you just get snatched in your own front yeah, yard. Everyone's at work. And 
Oh, I wrote, she comes out, like, question mark, question mark, and Tanya gets her dumb ass, is what I wrote, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tanya loads, puts her, puts Annie into the crate and loads her into the car and is at, go, like, goes to the airport to try and, like, load the crate into her plane. I'm not really sure what the plane was because Jake immediately shows up and is like, hey, what's going on? And she's just like, oh, hey, um... I have to do this delivery and he's like, hee hee, how do I know that you're not lying to me? Because you lied to me before, but is like actually joking with her about it, which I found extremely strange. Um, and she's like, oh, hee hee, well, I'm not lying this time. I have to do this delivery. And he's like, oh, let me help you with this crate. And he's like, she's like, no, 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 I got it. Like, really, don't worry about it. Suddenly... We're, we cut to them being inside the plane. The plane is piloting in itself, and there is a terrible POV of them, like, having sex in the plane. Hell yeah, on top the of POV the box. The POV is, like, <laughs> her looking Amazing. down at him, and his face is insane the, looking. It was the, so... That part was, like, a little nauseating, <laughs> to be honest. The cut to really the, like, close-up of his face yeah. is haunting. Yes. Legitimately haunting. So, and then they do this thing, I, so they're, like, doing it, like... a dumb like, guy orgasm. <laughs> yeah. Not great. And she, so she's, like, on top or whatever, and they're, like, quite literally banging against the crate, and it shows inside the crate of Annie's <laughs> body, like, jostling with the motion. And I was like, this is a step too far. We need to stop Incredible. right now. I love also, cinema. like, when she tied Annie up, she didn't, like, gag her. She just tied... A strap around her head. A, yeah, like a small <laughs> little thing or whatever. But she's still knocked out during this, so she's just like limply like jostling around. And I was like, this is vile. <laughs> um, Told you. Throw so, yeah. So they they finish up. They get back in the <laughs> pilot seat, up. and Tanya's like, <laughs> Tanya's like, that was great. Now they really have done the title, which is Deadly Mile High Club. To be um, fair, he got a blowjob earlier in the airplane. I think that counts. Yeah, sure. Um, so basically, Tanya is now telling him he's like, "What's you know, what's in the box? Can I go look in there?" <laughs> and she's like, "Oh no, no, absolutely not! Like it's essentially," and and like she basically makes up this lie on the spot. So she kind of like pun intended flounders a little bit but she essentially says that the box is full of fish pellets that have trackers in it and ucla or somebody pays her to like dump the box in the water so that the fish will eat the pellets and then they can track migration and i was like that is a pretty good lie because it doesn't take much to fool that guy but this seems kind of like a thing that would happen i would have said sort of. it was full of like those uh, pirate chests that like bubble out from fish tanks for the uh, fish in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. I would say it was just, full of fish. Yeah, <laughs> he probably would have bought running that. Running out of water, yeah. throw them in there. We have yeah, to right. refill the ocean with fish from overfishing. So, yeah, you know, we we we're restocking the ocean They'll with fish. They'll clearly figure out Don't a way to get it. this crate open. So <laughs> right, exactly. So she's basically like, okay, I'm gonna. I think this actually may be where she says, well, I'm going to go down to like this altitude so you can push the crate out. And she's like, don't, he's like, Oh, I want to see the pellets. And she's like, no, don't. They're smelly and greasy. And there, I was like, okay. there's a moment earlier because he's flying the plane and she's like, well, let's drop down to 500 feet. And he's like, is that safe? And she's like, yeah, it's fine. And I think it's when she's texting. So I think it is when he sees pink fedora the first time. So she's like, just go, dump the crate it'll be fine don't worry about it um and so he's out there trying to like pick the crate up but the weight of the crate and um annie is like heavy so he's like struggling a little bit and this gives him enough time to have his one single thought in this entire movie which is <laughs> is the crate biodegradable and tanya's like what the fuck are you talking about and he's like well if we dump this in the ocean i just like don't know if that's a good I idea you just say she's, yes like immediately yeah just immediately yes right she's like oh uh, i don't know we do it all the time just dump it like just do it figure it out i can't like keep this altitude much longer and so he's like okay let's count to three and then they're like Whoa, one, do you, two. Do, do you know how loud 
it would be with that door open. That right. they're just having this conversation kind of casually. And, yeah. <laughs> like... So he's about to push it over when thankfully Annie wakes up and is like, Jake, Jake, Jake. And he's like, what the fuck? How uh, do you know my name, Crate? <laughs> how, how do these fish pellets know my name? So um, he obviously is like, oh, my God, Annie, and pulls the crate back inside and lays it down. Tanya at this point is freaking out because the plan's ruined, right? And she lets slip that she's the one that killed the mother-in-law. And he's like, oh, my God, I can't believe you did this. And she's basically just like, hey, baby, why don't we just dump this crate anyway? and We can go be pilots together. It'll be fun. Like, let's just do it anyway. And he's like, no, I'm going to call the police. <laughs> so she knocks him out, uh, t- takes the plane off of ilo- autopilot, and literally parachutes out of the plane. Which I don't understand, because they were literally, like, they were just over the ocean. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, but now it's just, like, tundra, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> so... <laughs> So she jumps out. She's like, see ya. Jake is fucking passed out. Annie uses her keys in her pocket to unscrew the hinges of the crate and to get out. She's trying to wake Jake up, but he can't. But she can't. So she just decides... So she shuts the door to the plane and then tries to fly the plane herself. She's not very good at it, unfortunately. And they're literally about to crash when Jake's hands just appear on the steering wheel. And thank God he just knows how to pilot a plane now. It's fine. (laughs) Um, From the ground, Tanya sees that the plane is, in fact, flying and not crashing. And it's just kind of like, well, that's probably not great for me. And ah, and then Jake, like, chases her around with the plane. This is insane. And then, like, for a while, Annie's like, get her. She's She's running away. Again, they're, like, literally in the middle of nowhere. And he's, like, chasing her. And she's, like, running around. Then he's like, oh, I know. And he, like, flies over he over her and essentially knocks her out using the wind created by the <laughs> engine, I guess. And I was like, Incredible. okay. And Andy's like, yeah, you got her. I know, I, so the cop- I know all of this is bullshit because I've seen Jackass. And right. I've seen somebody jump into, like, a, the, the fucking thruster thing blowing out of the airplane and get hit in the head with a football. It was fine. Well, I I don't know how the football relates to it, but (laughs) I know Kit knows what I'm talking about. But there's like a scene where they're just like they have like the end, like the thing just blowing all that hot air out of the back of the the jet or whatever, and they're just like throwing things into it, which is like shooting shit at people in this field. Oh, okay. And one of them, they just throw like a football. Like they throw their shoes at people. All right, that makes sense. Oh, so she'd be fine. So she gets hit in the head with a football, and she's just knocked out. I she's wish. fine. <laughs> the cop, <Don't> <laughs> the cops come and arrest her, which is great. Uh, Jake and Annie kiss, right? So now it cuts to this scene is so fucking weird. <laughs> it cuts, I, I, Jake. It cuts to Jake buying a plane, like a fighter plane, from some guy, and mm-hmm. the guy is essentially just like. All right, great. Sounds good. Starts walking off. He turns around. He's like, hey, take care of her, all right? She was my dad's and my grandpa's before me. I was a I was a war brat, so this plane is like my home, so you know? And I was like, why is this happening? And then Jake is like, hey, whenever you want to take her up for a spin, just yeah. give me a call. A- Andy, and the guy's like. Andy literally just goes like, Jake, you know what to do. Like, what the I, fuck? Yes. And the guy's what the like... Fuck that? I thought he was going to be like, no, I can't no, I'm not buy, buy it. Yeah. family heirloom plane. Right. And the guy's just like, for reals? And he's like, yeah, kid, get out of here. And the <laughs> yeah, guy like it was like his fucking age or weird. older. <laughs> yeah, it was very weird. Uh, this is the time when Jake decides that he's going to confess to the fact that he slept with Tanya. And he's like, well, <laughs> you know... What a time. Can- she convinced me that you were cheating on me, so you know I thought it was Thanks fine. For Do you forgive buying me? Buying me a plane with your dead mom's money. Anyway, I fucked Tanya. L- yeah, right. Yeah, and she, he's like, "Do you forgive me?" And she's like, "Yeah, I forgive you. Don't worry." And then she like makes this joke where she's like going to allude to the fact that maybe she slept with her, <laughs> like her professor. But then she was like, "Nah, never mind." 
and he goes, wait, what? And it's like, and, then, <laughs> and it's like, and it's like saved it's by like the a, bell music starts playing. <laughs> literally. And he's like laughing and smiling. And he's like, wait, what did you say? And then like chases after her. And I was like, that was so wacky. It's, it's and like, not like the, it's, it should have just ended with her like getting arrested or something. Yeah, I don't think any of this this heirloom plane thing was necessary. Like, are, are, like is, is it supposed to be like, oh, see, he was actually a good guy. Like, I'm so sorry. I, but... I think you could have, like, done the, like, cut to, I don't know, a year later, and he's, like, a pilot, and they just have, like, a happy And they're, like, in a plane together like, or something, yeah. Yeah, they could... <laughs> they're flying somewhere, and all of a sudden they see the pilots, Tanya. <laughs> cut. That would have been actually in her like disguise in her mustache that would have been they just great. look out the window she <laughs> stared at him like with like a fucking wrench doing something to the plane yeah like she's or she's she, it like cuts to twilight zone and she's like on the wing <laughs> there's a tiger like, on the wing <laughs> <laughs> but like this like ending where they're both joking with each other about like having cheated on each other i'm just like not into it's, it's, it's weird. very it's, like strange. very like it's like such a wild tonal shift yeah, like, to, like yes. how the rest of the movie is, but uh, yeah, it rocks. What a great movie! <laughs> yeah, A-plus. cinema. We're back. I, I've seen yeah. worse. Yeah, <laughs> put in theaters. It, we it, can was, say it. it was. It was. Put, put it, it was back in theaters. Like, stupid. Mor- like Morbius. Put it back in theaters. Could you imagine if this played in a fucking theater? <laughs> no. <laughs> It'd be nice. I'd be the only one there to see. I it. literally, if I if <laughs> if I could ever figure out how to do like put on screenings, this is this is going in there. Oh, one hundred percent. Fuck a double feature with like a erotic nights of the living dead or something, something real upsetting. <laughs> um, yeah, this movie rocks. Um, sure. <laughs> Lindsay still disagrees. <laughs> Whatever. I will say. It's no, no I will Santa say... with muscles. Yeah, I will say that aside from the one scene in Deadly Dilf where the brother gets killed in that, like, mouse trap trap type thing, aside from that, this was, like, way better than I, Deadly Dilf just because, like, yeah. stuff happens. I, I, oh, go ahead, Lindsay. I wanted more sex. So that's the thing. That So that was, like, our my, that yeah. was my issue with Deadly Dilf. Is there's, like, the sex scene in it is, like, 20 seconds long, and, like, all you see is it, like, like the guy's back, yeah you see a back and like her face and that's it and so like i don't know there was at yeah. least a sex scene in this so it was hornier than there Deadly was Dilf. double the amount in this. and i feel like yeah. it had like better like crazy moments like her pushing the mom out of the airplane is incredible the entire like yeah. plan for the end is like insane. Deadly Dilf, like the the last ten minutes are pretty fun, but everything else was so boring. So I think it made me like watching this after that made me like it more than I probably normally well, I would think, have. Yeah, and I think like for me the tone of the movies were really different. Like this was obviously extremely wacky because from the very beginning it starts with this woman thinking her <laughs> dead lover has returned in the form of this like guy. That's like, you know what I mean? So it's already just like whack attack. And she pushes somebody out of a plane. So that's crazy. Whereas Deadly <laughs> Dilf started like, like this young girl going through a trauma. And then everything else that happens is kind of like emotionally based, you know, versus this woman just being just, I mean, she obviously went through it too, but like, I don't know. I think the tones were just really yeah. different. Um. All right. Kit, what'd you watch this week? Uh, not a lot. <laughs> I went to Austin and did a uh, double header of uh, Female Trouble and Pink Flamingos, yeah. hosted by John Waters, and that was super fucking incredible. Um, and then I went to see the new Bad Boys, and it <laughs> slaps. <laughs> I refuse to. Well, I don't know. I can't say. I don't think I've ever seen the original one, so. Oh, one and two are fantastic. I haven't seen the last one, but I saw the trailer for this one. It's like, oh, yep, I gotta go see Bad Boys. Is it the same director, or is it, like, somebody new this time? Uh, I don't know who the directors of this one and the last one are. But, uh, it's not Michael that's, Bay. Yeah, I guess that's what I was 
wondering. Uh, he does show up in it, though. Of course he does. And it made me cackle. I saw, like, some behind-the-scenes thing from that that, like, Will Smith had just, like, this, like, insane camera rig on that, like, he was actively flipping around from, like, his face to, like, the front as he's, like, holding a gun. That I was like, oh, that sick. was like, oh, this kind of like an interesting yeah. way to shoot something. But there's a uh, a first person sequence with Will Smith where it like flips between his perspective and then to his yeah, face. Yeah, that's got to be it. And I just thought it was, I thought it was editing. I didn't realize it was a no. Yeah, he's camera rig. he's got like a camera that's rig it. attached to his chest, and he's like actively the one flipping it as he's like doing it, which I thought was like pretty impressive huh. to be able to like do that i love movie magic <laughs> uh katie <laughs> what'd you watch this week um let's see i re i watched interview with the vampire of course masterpiece of course um <laughs> well my my uh friend who came to pick up some of my kittens um one of the things that we bonded over was like Anne Rice and that kind of thing. So we watched that together. Then I watched Deadly Manor for the first time uh, from 1990, and I did not care for it. <laughs> then I watched um, a TV show on Hulu called A Teacher, which was essentially about a teacher having an inappropriate relationship with a student, um, which. I kind of only watched because I like Nick Robinson, but it was just okay, I think. And then I watched the documentary Bratz, which is uh, directed by Andrew McCarthy, and it was about the quote-unquote oh, Bratz. Brat pack. Pack. I was like, what the fuck is Bratz? <laughs> yeah, and um, it was really interesting to me because um, the documentary is essentially him wanting to talk about it now because I guess apparently that article and them being termed the Brat Pack like ruined their lives. Like they absolutely hated it. And that's when they all kind of decided that they wanted to like distance themselves from each other and they stopped doing movies together, which I think is sad. And so he got like a bunch of people to come and do interviews kind of like talking about it and like the only ones that weren't in it were um Judd Nelson and Molly Ringwald because they like didn't want to talk about it or whatever but if you are like a fan of any of those movies um you know like St. Elmo's Fire, Pretty in Pink which obviously is one of my favorite movies ever and stuff like that it was like really interesting to see like everyone's perspective on like that time in movies and like their careers and stuff like that so I recommend it it's not that long or whatever um and I think that's it alright Lindsay just Golden Girls Golden Girls who's like I also rewatched I don't know why I had the inkling to watch this but I watched for like the hundredth time John Tucker must die <laughs> And I think it's because a friend of mine told me to watch One Tree Hill. And one of the girls from <laughs> One Tree Hill is also in John Tucker Must Die. Um, yeah, and it's not good, but it's also not terrible to have on. Just, you know, on in the background. Is I just got really confused because you said John Tucker must die, but in my head I heard John dies in the end, and I was like, "Wait, what?" I, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. Very different. I, I, I was gonna say, got isn't it. one of those considered to be like really like good? I've not seen either, but I feel like one of those I hear get talked about all the time is actually being like really good. Well, it's not John Tucker must <laughs> die. No, it's John dies in the end. Uh, I'm pretty sure because I have not it's seen it, but the book that it's based on and there might be a second one maybe i think pe are, it are kind of like well known so but yeah i haven't seen it i have seen john tugger must die though goofy oh uh... very goofy that's like my vibe just like please yes let me watch bad 2000s movies that i've seen like a thousand times but sometimes you gotta yeah yeah ashanti's in it you it's... know like what else what else can you 
This is Sophia me with zero Bush, threat. isn't it? She's also in One Tree Hill. And she plays basically the same character, just kind of like really sexually aggressive. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, I did not watch a single movie this week. Pretty much Katie and I recorded it <gasps> and I've been working every day since. So uh, mm. just fucking plugging along at Survivor and Caitlin and I jump back in to finish this season of Real Housewives of Potomac, which is a banger. <laughs> But none of those people like live in like I live yeah. near the Potomac, well, <laughs> and I feel like none of those women live in the. Potomac. There's there's an entire thing in the, like the season that just finished where like one of them is just like, well, you're not really in Potomac, you're in like North Potomac, and I was like, all right, <laughs> got her. <laughs> um, all right, shout outs, Katie. Um. Uh, I also should have written mine down, Katie. That makes it <laughs> only better. <laughs> I was trying to think of something that would like kind of relate to this, but I just really can't think of anything. <laughs> so you got. <laughs> I think the the Bratz documentary. Right. Let's just say that. Uh, because I did see there's three new Mountain Dews out, but I think I refuse to try them because they're all just like summer firecracker. And like they're all summer themed, and I'm like, I just feel like they're gonna taste the yeah, same, like gonna, that yeah, popsicle. Be uh, yeah, Kit, what about you? Uh, parachutes. <laughs> parachutes are good. Someone tries parachutes. to throw you out of a plane, you're wearing one. You're yeah, fine. if you just <laughs> yeah, always have a parachute on, you're probably gonna be all right. Yeah, probably seems seems good. Uh, Lindsay, you have something you want to shout out? I have been. I know you like this podcast as well, but. Uh, Knowledge Fight podcast. Oh, insane, uh, the last, like, two weeks. <laughs> yeah, the last couple of weeks as we're witnessing uh, Alex Jones' downfall in real time has been a hoot. And I saw them live uh, when they came to Baltimore, and it was really awesome. So, yeah, go listen to Knowledge yeah, Fight. I was banned, like, two years ago from making them a <laughs> shout-out after doing it, like, for a year or so every day for, yeah. oh sorry i'll no, shout out can... i can shout out my business then yeah. like go buy my yeah. stuff <laughs> we'll let you we'll plug and then put like links to all your shit that you want in the the show notes too oh, um thanks <laughs> uh today would uh would have been fulci lucio fulci's however many years birthday so go watch fulci booby that's my shout out <laughs> go watch devil however yeah. many years go watch, i don't know how old he would have been <laughs> Go uh go watch Devil's Honey so you can see a woman get fucked by a saxophone, basically. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um all right. What are we doing next week? Monster Monster Man? Yeah, Monster Man. Perfect. That's su- He's a monster who's also a man. It's a sci fi channel movie, isn't it? <laughs> I think so. I definitely watched it a lot right. on the sci fi channel. I know it's gonna be good then. What's oh yeah, on? it's Katie's. Katie's gonna fucking hate it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Thank Katie. You. I'm so yeah. sorry. It's, <laughs> it's on Prime. I think right. so. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, everybody go watch Monster Man. Um, Lindsay, what would uh, what would you like to plug? I will plug. Well, I have a podcast, but I haven't been keeping up with it. So I will plug the thing I have been keeping up with, which is my business, uh, where I do pop ups and mail order. For low waste and plastic free home and personal care essentials, it's called From Here to Home Essentials, from here to home essentials.com or on Instagram at the same yeah, name. I'll put like links to both in our show notes and all that shit. Thanks. Please buy my stuff. I don't want a real job and I don't <laughs> want us all to have yes. microplastics in our, uh, you know, our bits. Yeah, go support Lindsay. Lindsay is, hands down, one of my favorite people on the planet uh, the you. only person I will spend a shit ton of money to go to a festival and then not watch a single band with <laughs> uh, hey we, had a, we watched we watched like half a Val song I think we watched most of Immortal Bird and that was probably about it <laughs> yeah, Peri- uh, but hey, I, that was a great weekend I had a lot of periodically, fun periodically we would be like I don't know what band's playing let's go see and we would watch like 45 seconds and be like alright let's go back outside <laughs> 
In my defense, it was like when we went up to the top floor, it was like pitch black and like 5,000 degrees inside. And I was like, I just can't do this. Like, this is just miserable. (laughs) Um... All right, if you'd like to support us, you could join our Patreon at patreon.com slash Podcast. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at I Hope you Suffer Podcast. Leave us a rating and review and all that shit at all the fucking places that allow that. Uh, you can follow Kit at Hidden Kit Story and Kitchification of Blood. You can follow Katie at Werewolf Face and join Katie's Patreon at patreon.com slash Werewolf Face. You can listen to my other podcast, Snake Hate Movie Club. Lindsay, you're welcome for us making you watch this movie. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yes, thank you. This was... <laughs> no. Look, I'm not going to lie. I did want to do nothing. And I did... I laid on the couch and I watched this movie and I was like, Jake, there was just like not a single thought going on behind my eyes. <laughs> I, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this promise to you that the minute it's available streaming somewhere, you and I will do an episode on the unauthorized Saved by the Bell biography. Oh my God, yes. I, ha- I have oh. the DVD. It is in- insane. <laughs> and 100% not true. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't I think wait. it's based off, like, Dustin Diamond's book. <laughs> Not Which true. everyone, every single person in the cast was like, he made so much of this up. <laughs> um, Alright. Thanks again, Lindsay, for uh, coming on. This was fun. Thank you. Um, we'll be back next week with Monster Man. I hope you don't get thrown into the ocean out of an airplane in a box, but why? Yeah. <laughs>